Okay, in this video, we are going to have a look at two temperature sensors and how we can display the temperature values on our serial terminal TerraTerm. Now, the first temperature sensor that we're going to look at is the MCP9808, and it's made by Microchip. You can see it here mounted to my breadboard, and it's a very accurate sensor. Now, we extract the temperature data from the sensor by using code running on the Pico, the Raspberry Pi Pico, and it's written in fourth. We're extracting the data values over the I2C bus. Now we could set up upper and lower threshold values and critical threshold values for alarms. So right now I have a critical threshold value of 26 degrees programmed into the sensor. So when the temperature goes above 26 degrees, this LED will come on indicating a critical alarm. So if I put my finger on the temperature sensor, the temperature will increase. And when it reaches 26 degrees, you can see the LED comes on. And when I release, the temperature will drop down and the LED goes out. So our next temperature sensor will be the DS18B20, which is made by Dallas Semiconductor. Okay, here's the second temperature sensor that we're going to have a look at. Now this is the DS18B20, which is made by Dallas Semiconductors, which was bought out by Maxim. Now this temperature sensor comes in a TO92 package with three leads. Now we could get it in other enclosures, like this one here. It's a stainless steel uh, tube where we can measure the temperature of liquids. Now to extract the data from this temperature sensor, we have to use the Dallas one wire protocol. So I have code running on the Raspberry Pi Pico, and it's written in fourth, and that's going to extract the data from the sensor using the one wire protocol. Now we're going to hook up our computer to the USB connector on the FTDI module, and we can run TerraTerm, and we're going to extract the temperature data values and we'll be using the VT100 ANSI escape codes to make our displays a lot more professional looking. Okay, I have TerraTerm up and running on my computer and it's connected to my Pico board. So we could read the DS18B20 sensor. So we'll hit enter and you get an OK prompt. So type temp, now I'll read the sensor. So you can see the first line there, that's a data dump of the ID. Now every DS18B20 sensor has its own ID, its own serial number and that's it right here so if you want to network or daisy chain a bunch together we have to know the ID of each device. Now when we do a read it puts it in the scratch pad register which is right here so the first two bytes is our, is our low and high byte for our temperature data so from these two bytes we could calculate our temperature which is 21.437 degrees. Now these bytes are the threshold high and threshold low bytes for our alarm and these bytes are reserved and the last byte is the CRC checksum. So now I want to update. I want to I want to see my temperatures updating. So if I go temp and do a carriage return and we'll do that every 10 milliseconds and do that many times and then I'll get my updates. So it's updating but it's pretty it's pretty messy. It's pretty busy. So if I, if I touch my sensor, you can see my temperature going up. But I want to change the code. I don't want to have it this, this busy. It's kind of distracting. So we'll mod modify the code, and we'll come back and see if we can make this display a little bit better. OK, I modified my code. So if you hit Enter, get OK prompt. If I type temp, question mark, OK, I get a single temperature. Now if I want to update, if I want a temperature update, I could go temp, question mark, carriage return, and do that many times. So now she's scrolling, now she's updating. And if I hold the temperature sensor with my fingers, you can see the temperature going up. So it's working. But I want something even better. I don't want it to be scrolling. I want to have it standing still and just have the temperature values change. So I'll stop. So this is where we use or ANSI escape codes. So now we have the temperature. It's not scrolling, but it's still updating. You, see, you can see the temperature values are updating. If I hold the temperature sensor, it's going up. We have another problem, though. You see the cursor on the T there. It's flickering. So we have to modify the code some more and make it better. We'll get rid of that. OK, let's try that again. So we'll go test. Now you can see temperature, and there's no cursor 
interference and if I hold the temperature sensor you can see it's moving so that's what we want so I even I even want more I want to have color I want to introduce color so if the temperature is above zero degrees it'll be red and when the temperature goes below zero it'll turn blue so that'll be my next code change we'll add color okay once more give me okay prompt type test so there's a temperature and it's in red so it's above zero degrees now if I hold it with my fingers you can see it's going up now I'll hit it with some cold spray take it down and when it goes below zero see it turns blue so as she's warming up I'll put my finger on it I'll get it trying to warm it up faster now she's above zero we're back to red so next we'll look at the NC escape codes that I used to do this okay here's the escape codes that I used now if you go online and you search for NC escape codes there's many of them that you could use this is just a few of them so I make up my own words for an instance red if I type red at the OK prompt all this code here will run then all my text will be red and if I type blue this code will run and all my text will be blue so we first start out we send 27 to the to the terminal so 27 is the escape NC escape which is hex 1b then we send a string it starts with the left square bracket the 9 1 the 1 is the color of red 9 is the intensity and here 4 is the color of blue and 9 is the intensity if we put a 3 there there will be a lower intensity and if I type normal this will run and I'll put it back to white all my text will be right white here's position now we could put our text in any position on the screen so on mine it was 20 and 3 so it was row 20 and column 3 where I started my text and here's my cursors where I hide the cursor and then I show the cursor so we don't get that cursor uh, interference so these are the few words that I use in my code so you can make up your own to make a very professional display okay so that was my little primer on ANSI escape codes that you could use when you're reading sensors and we could have multiple sensors daisy chained and each sensor could have its position on a screen so you could come up with a pretty sophisticated screen for multiple sensors now to practice these ANSI escape codes you don't need a microcontroller you can just run TerraTerm or any serial terminal program that will decode ANSI escape codes and turn on local echo and just type in the, the escape codes and they will respond on the screen so that's a way you could practice uh, before you could write code so come up with uh, your own ANSI escape codes and come up with your own professional looking displays.